All right, hello and welcome people. What's going on? It's Mizo TV, and since I've had a few minutes now, a few hours actually, um, just to calm down a little, let's actually talk about the event as much because I didn't really get to that um, in my post match video because obviously I couldn't really do it. Um, I had to let it all out of my system, I really did, and I'm calm now, I'm calm now. So, um, yeah, we won 4 2 against Juventus in a match that honestly. We should have actually lost it. If I'm being honest, we should have actually lost Juventus. You know, they scored two goals literally in the first 20 minutes or so, and then had the chance to score another one, which Neuer brilliantly, brilliantly saved. Um, but then also, um, the linesman made a mistake, and they should have actually had three goals at that point. And if they had three goals, we would have been basically out because then we would have to score four goals in the second half, and that that would have been insane. You know, we we took us, uh, it took us essentially. 120 minutes to score four goals so scoring four goals in 45 minutes would have been crazy and um, yeah it, it is what it is all right but 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 we did come back we did come back from 2-0 where a lot of people wrote us off I personally thought that we could still do it I, I, I personally believe that if we could maybe score a goal within like 60 or 70 minutes then we'll make it back um, obviously we scored a goal close to 70 minutes I was like yeah okay yeah just before that I actually I was like okay there's no way we can do it and then a few minutes later we scored so I was like okay now we've got we're now, we're, now we've got like 15 minutes left or so let's do this I actually got like a 17 minutes just live reaction um, from a point on um, I might actually upload that later on I don't know but um, yeah, I, I was like, yeah, we can do it, and then we certainly we did. And obviously with the players that we had, Vidal especially, who was in next outstanding form, so I thought he was probably our best player on the field uh, with Costa. I'm talking about you know, the whole game itself because Costa, every time he got the ball, he literally he just tried to go forward, he just tried to create, he just tried to do, but I think it didn't come off. It didn't come off until obviously he created the chance for Lewandowski, which Lewandowski finished. Um, sorry, my, my ears are just ringing the whole day today. <laughs> um, and uh, obviously then um, Vidal basically won the ball back for the second goal and when he then passed it to Coleman who then crossed it into Miller. So for me, Vidal throughout the whole 120 minutes, he was a man of the match. And I think throughout the um, throughout 120 minutes here and 90 minutes at um, Interim, I think that um, probably Vidal was the best player on the field. That's what I think um, in, in those two legs. Uh, but I just want to say that for me the game actually changed not with the second half and the second half we looked much better but I think the game actually changed when two substitutions happened actually three substitutions should I say when three substitutions happened I felt like the game changed and when the fourth one came I think the game finally totally swayed into our path but when the three substitutes I'm talking about was Sturado for Kadira I thought that as soon as Kadira went out they really struggled uh, then it was um uh, Manzukic on for I believe it was Morata um, anyway it was Mo Morata going out and Manzukic coming on essentially um, that was the substitution that killed him because Morata was causing us all kind of troubles and when Manzukic came on because of his lack of pace and everything he wasn't really able to successfully do a counter which is why um, it, it really you know it, it really helped us in regard to actually defend and then the first substitution that I think really swayed this game into our, into our favour was the Coleman substitution because um, obviously you know Coleman he did really well he came on for Alonso and I thought that he was absolutely fantastic I thought he, he was a little bit predictable because every time you know he got the ball he went to his right which is what he normally does but obviously um, I think it was Storaro he knew what he was going to do like, literally after the first time he knew what Coleman was going to do and it just seemed like Coleman trying to go to his right and Storaro trying to defend from his basically his left essentially yeah his left and um, it was just kind of funny watching it, just as a you know, just watching that two, that little battle that they were having. Um, but Coleman a few times he went onto his left, and obviously later on he scored with his left foot when he went inside. So yeah, yeah, you need to go a little bit on the side more. You need to be a little bit more confident. It's like a little bit like Robbery, you know, because Robbery he doesn't care if he goes left or right. Don't be like Robin, where you just go one direction. Because Robin he can go one direction, but he can also switch it up and go to the other side. Whereas Coleman he just seems to be able to just going once and maybe like once or twice go to the left so I think that's the one area that you might have to improve on um, but yeah I'm happy that you scored Cause I, yeah I really am I really am happy that you scored and um, 
overall, like Juventus, they did really well. You know, like I said, I thought that Juventus they should have actually won today. I'll be honest with you, I think they should have won today. And it's a little bit sad seeing them go out like this. You know, but based on a mistake by the referee. But that's football, you know. You have to live with those mistakes. Um, if, if, if that happened to us, I'd be the same way. Because I don't criticize referees much. Um, for me, you know, I don't criticize referees because they're human. And if I can't see something in real time, or if I'm struggling seeing something in real time, then I don't criticize the ref unless it's like something like blazingly obvious, like you know, a player literally being on the other side of the pitch, and um, it's like something like that. But with this one, it was pretty close. Not, I'm saying that line one should have seen better, but. It is what it is ultimately. Um, you know, I do feel sorry for Juventus, especially for Buffon, because I really like Buffon. I really, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of keepers. So some of you guys can't tell. Um, having played as a keeper myself, I love, I love keepers. All right, I love keepers. Old dudes, keepers, they're just amazing. You know, you look at some of the old keepers. Not so much the newer generation. I think from new generation, I'd say probably only Neuer really, that really stands out to me. But from like the older generation, you have Casillas when he was good. You have Buffon, when obviously he's still, he's still balling. And you have person, my personal favorite keeper of all time, the one that inspired me to become a keeper, Oliver Kahn, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, uh, it's actually kind of fun, you know, just actually watching that match again because the first time we, like you mentioned, absolutely destroyed us. They pressed us so high that every time we got the ball, we had to pass it between Kimmich. Um, Alaba, Benatia, and Neuer, and they really just pr you know pressured these players. Um, so every time Neuer did get the ball, you had to just kick it out, and obviously that didn't work out most of the time because the way that Neuer kicks the ball, because he's got this very he's got this technique of not kicking the ball high up the field, but trying to kick it just as fast as possible um, in a straight line, basically a little, like that high in, in a straight line, doing it um, consistently. So that is the one thing that he uh, keeps doing, but. Um, yeah, you know, it, it, that obviously to counters that can be really effective, but it can also, it, it, um, for us to start counters that can be really effective because the ball doesn't have to drop down. But the thing is that when the team gets the ball before our teammates do, um, then they can go and do their counter. So that was obviously something that cost us quite a few times. And Alonso got taken off. Obviously, we thought that he was pretty poor. And I, lo I saw a lot of people say that he's bad against slow. That he's that he shouldn't be playing in the Champions League because he's so slow. The thing is, right. And um, uh, I'm gonna put that out there in defense of Alonso. Yo, I, I thought he should have been taken out. I, in my halftime thing, I said that he should be taken out, but um, not taken out. That sounds so wrong. But you know, taken off the field. Um, but in defense of Alonso, Juventus pressed a lot. They pressed a lot. You know, you know, you, you normally don't have teams that press like that. And Juventus, they really did. They really went forward. They really didn't let us have a minute. They really wanted to show that they were not the same team that got dominated for 60 minutes. Interim, so that's why they really went all out. So, um, that's why for me, in defense of Alonso, I don't I think he should play sometimes league games, but most of the time, I think it should be um, in like the first leg and not really in the second leg. Or the, well, depending on the results, of course, but I think in the first leg, he's better at uh, controlling the game. Uh, because most I don't think we've had a single game on the pep where we played the first leg at home, literally. You know, we've not, I, we don't, have, I don't think we have. I'm thinking about it right now, no, we haven't. Uh, Arsenal in his first year Arsenal that was away United that was away um, who else did we play that year uh, I don't know who but Real Madrid that was obviously away the first leg um, then you go in his second year last year obviously um, the first match was against uh, was against Arsenal I think it was against Arsenal could be against Arsenal because um, it normally always is against Arsenal so uh Oh, no, actually, last year, the first leg, Shakhtar Donetsk, away. Then the second match, Porto, first leg, away. Then against Barcelona, first leg, away. Like, Pep Guardiola, you, you just can't get a home leg, um, the first home leg with Pep Guardiola. I don't know what it is, but it's just the way it is. Anyway, I thought that Pep Guardiola, his plan, his game plan was pretty poor. Um, honestly, it really was. And uh, his, his substitution, I thought it was a little bit late, if I'm being honest here. But ultimately, you know, it did work out. So <laughs> saying that right now, you know, what, what's that really going to change, you know? Um, but I did think that substitutions were, uh, especially Thiago. I thought Thiago should have come on in like the 80th minute or so. But hindsight being 2020, you know, if Thiago was on, then uh, we might have not scored, you know? <laughs> so it is what it is. 
But uh, this match, honestly, it was it was amazing. It was uh, on, this match reminded me of like one of the first few matches that I watched as a Bayern fan, which was Getafe. And when I say Bayern fan, I mean as you guys know, I mean I made a video about when I became a Bayern fan, really a Bayern fan. Um, the first match that I watched was, was like Getafe, and um, the first match that I like, properly watched, and that, that really this game really reminded me of that kind of um, of, of that kind of uh, of that match, just because of how we fought and we just kept going. And ultimately, I do think that um, this is going to be one of the matches that we'll remember, and maybe this is going to be the turning point of our season because obviously we haven't been that great in the second half of the season. So this could be the point where we're going to turn it up, we're going to switch it up, and then we're going to try and come back, and we're going to try and win the Champions League. Woo -woo! Um, but ultimately, the, you know, there's still a long way to go. And uh, on Friday. The draws have been made. I will, of course, do like I did in my, pre in my round of 16 draws. I will make my own draws. Um, see who we get. Obviously, I predicted. I, I don't know who I actually drew. I think it was Juventus. Yeah, I drew Juventus. I drew Juventus in my when I did my own. Um, you know, with little pots that I drew the names out of, and I drew Juventus. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be that way again. Yeah, I'm gonna draw team I'm, I'm gonna draw the right team and then FIFA's gonna draw exactly what I thought they would do because the FIFA they listen to me you for they listen to me so yeah that's the way it is but we won 4-2 it's a good day very good day um actually it was yesterday but it, it, yesterday was a very good day and I'm happy I, I'm happy I'm really happy uh, I always believed that we could do it I always believed that we could actually turn the game around but like I said I thought that we had to get a goal within like the first 70 maybe 6 like 70 minutes at max because I've, I knew that as soon as we get a goal Juventus would defend even better and that's a problem you know when a team defends even better yeah it struggles 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 and um, they did but we, we, we pulled through in the last minute ladies and gentlemen in the last minute we did it, but, 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 this season is a long way to go, and that's why we're gonna have to fight for a long way, because this season is another good two months, yeah, two and a half months, and until, un until, you know, our next match, we're gonna have to be focused, we're gonna have to work on ourselves, because the way we play today, we played against this, like, for example, take a Barcelona, um, even a Real Madrid, like I'm not taking anything away from Juventus, but what I'm saying is that Juventus, they're not really known for their attacking prowess, whereas you have teams like Barcelona and Real Madrid that, you know, that really punish play, uh, that really punish teams that don't know how to, uh, how to defend, and today we really did, wasn't able, we weren't able to defend whatsoever, so if, if we play like this against a Barcelona or a Real Madrid, this, this could have turned ugly, so I mean, even PSG, I mean, PSG I'm a huge fan of Slatan Ibrahimovic. I just like arrogant people because I'm a little bit arrogant myself. So yeah, I, I like Slatan, but um, I don't think he would have been the perfect type of striker. If someone like if someone like Neymar, Messi, they would have absolutely destroyed us today. Because if especially if you look at the second goal as as a you know if you look at the second goal that we conceded, um, Quadrado he didn't even do really much. Like literally, Morat Morata he just ran straight and everyone just fell. Everyone just everyone just dropped and was like, what's going on here? Like, why, why are you guys not putting a foot in? So if that was someone that, has, that is a lot more technical, this could have gone really early. That's why I really need Boateng back and even Javi back. Because Javi, one-on-one, -on -one, you're not getting past him. Boateng, we all know what he can do. One-on-one, you know? -on -one, you're not getting past him. And then long range, he, like, he, just, he, just, he just takes the ball off you and then just leaves the counter. That's how he is. Um, so un unusual poor match from Alaba as well today. But uh, it's better now than later because now we've actually made it through. Later, we might not. Um, to all the Juventus people that are watching this video, I don't know if there are any people um, that, are, that are, you know, Juventus fans. Um, honestly, I, I do feel sorry for you guys, but um, I have a lot more respect for you guys there. Yeah, because I always respected you guys, but I always thought, yeah, you know, how big is your squad depth? How good are you? Now with like three key, well, three key players out, you still did amazing. And I think uh, you, should hold your heads, you should hold your heads high, um, but obviously... I'm happy. I, I'm, I'm happy, okay? I'll be honest, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy, okay? You can't blame me for that. You're not, you can't, you know? <laughs> but uh, that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. We won 4-2. Um, one of the match, for me, as I said, I thought Vidal, probably. Vidal or Costa. Coleman, you know, was probably one of the extra time. 
Um, although even then, I'd probably say that Vidal had a good shout of being man of the extra time. Man, uh, man of extra time, yeah, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense. But if I had to give ratings, cause I, I always wanted to do ratings after the match, but if I had to give ratings for our whole team, uh, I'd probably give Neuer a... Uh, a 5. Probably his poorest match that I've seen him. Um, yeah, probably his poorest match that I've seen him at Bayern. Yeah. Although, think about it, he normally has really poor matches against Gladbach, so in general, I think that this was probably his poorest big match at Bayern, um, but he made up for it with, like, with great saves as well, that, could, that kept us in the game, but in general, I think that he was pretty much at fault for like the first goal, certainly, and the second goal, not so much, the second goal, not so much, but it just poor, poor decision makings, and obviously, we could have conceded a third goal, so now he gets a five from me. Then we look at um, Alaba, going with the original lineup first. Alaba, um, I'd give him a five and a half. He was obviously really poor in this match. He you know, gave the ball away for the second goal, um, made a mistake for the first goal with Neuer. Uh, but I thought that after like the first half, he was he, he improves. I'm not going to say he played good or great, but I thought that he improved. So that's why he'll get that extra little bit of rating. Because he, he did it for the you know, first 45 minutes, he was struggling. But then he did it for the next... 85 minutes uh, 75 minutes um, so that's what Alaba for me gets 5.5 then you look at the two centre backs Kimmich I thought Kimmich was the better of the two centre backs which is, which is a lot because he's not even a centre back but I thought Kimmich was pretty good uh, I give him a 6 you know that, that, that's pretty good in my opinion that's pretty good in my opinion he, he, not outstanding um, could have done better much better for the second goal but not outstanding but definitely not like awful you know uh, then you look at someone like Benatia Benatia, I thought, that, like I said, like I said, my halftime thing, um, he didn't do anything on the ball. He didn't do anything on the ball, and obviously he didn't even put a foot in for the second goal. So uh, for me, he gets a four point five, maybe a four. Um, so, yeah, I thought that he was ultimately our worst player on the pitch because I think that he he should have just done much more. Like you know, he came in as a centre back. He is a he's our one centre back that we actually had that we played, and he didn't um, play the way that pe that centre backs play under Pep. So yeah. And we look at the right back, Lamb. Lamb, I thought you got into dangerous positions a lot. I thought that he was probably like the strongest of our um, of our defensive lineup. And for me, he gets a um, for me he gets a six. I think six, maybe six point. Yeah, I, I, I give him a six. He got into dangerous areas a lot, but I thought that um, he didn't offer too much. I thought that he, he went forward. Played the ball, but often he didn't actually try and create much. He just um, tried to, you know, pass it around. And I thought that he should have done more. Like, basically, the way I'm trying it, tidy, but not really effective. Um, then we look at the two holding mid the two midfielders, uh, Vidal and Alonso. Alonso, I'd give him a 4.5. I, thought, I didn't think it was bad to an extent where, you know, he was awfully, that like, he was really awful. But I thought that he... He, he didn't. He didn't offer much, and that's the one thing that Alonso has to do. Like even if he plays bad, he normally offers a lot. So you know, he normally leads the counter. He normally is the metronome. And obviously, when the team breaks down, then the metronome is normally at fault. At fault. So obviously, um, but uh, Alonso, he should be at fault. So as I said, I think that Alonso probably gets a like I said, four point five. I think four point five. That sounds like a just result. Just rating, I should say, and then we we'll have a look at Vidal, who I feel like I said, I thought my under the match, in my opinion, we won everything, tried to lead everything, tried to win everything, and ultimately did most things. Um, so for me, Vidal gets a, a, a 8.5, 8.5 to 9, I'll, I'll say 8.5, 8.5. Um, which is you know that being our best score that just says that says a lot about this game but yeah, for me he gets an 8.5 then we look at our left winger rubbery rubbery I thought had a pretty mixed game I thought that <sighs> I, thought, I thought that there was so much more that he could have done because I think that for me I normally expect rubber to either get the ball you know cross it in uh, or get the ball go on his right and then take a shot and he didn't do either of that so he beat his man but he ultimately, most of the time, he just played too much with the ball, and then there was no but, and then his um, cross was poor. So for me, yeah, for me, I'd give him probably a five point five. Then Muller, you see, that's the thing about Muller. I can't really judge him because 
he didn't really do anything for 90 minutes and he didn't really do anything for 120 minutes but then he just came clutch in the last minute you know that's, that's Miller you don't see him for 90 minutes and then suddenly he just there and scores so <laughs> he's the phantom of the opera the Raumdeuter that's just the way he is and um honestly I don't know how to judge him like based on just his performance as a whole you know, what he's done off Besides the goal, he'd probably get something along the lines of a 4, maybe a 4.5. But then you look, then you take the goal into consideration and you think, okay, his job is to create a goal, his job is to make a goal. So you're like, well, you've got to bump it up, you've got to bump his rating up a little bit. So I'll, with, with Muller, I'd say, I'll give him a 5.5 in my opinion. I'll give him a 5.5. I think that's a just result just because of the goal, obviously, coming in in clutch, clutch time. Um, then you look at on the right wing you have Costa. Costa like I said I thought even though he wasn't great because I thought that a lot of times he should have done much better with the ball like he, his shots were awful his crosses you know, there were no crosses that's the thing there were hardly any crosses but when he did cross he, cre he's, he created a chance for Lewandowski but for me his mentality alone in like the second half because he was the only one that really went for it him and Vidal were the only two players that really went for it and obviously Vidal was trying to stabilise everything because obviously Alonso went out so Vidal to stabilise everything uh, so Costa was our only really attacking threat in the second half. So for me, he gets a he gets a seven. He gets a seven from me. Seven, yeah. He gets a seven from me. Yeah, he, he does. He really does. Yeah, he gets a seven from me. That's that. you heard it here, and I'm not gonna change that. And obviously, you look at Lewandowski. I thought Lewandowski had a really he, Lewandowski's in the same boat as Müller basically in this match. He had a really quiet game. Um, but I think that he did do a little bit more than Müller because he actually linked up with Lewandowski quite well. He actually tried to create much more than Müller did, and um, so that's why I'd say that Lewandowski. I probably give him a six, you know, because obviously he scored a goal, and I thought that he did try to do a little bit, but it just didn't come off for him. And um, now, obviously, with his goal ultimately coming in as well. Um, it, he deserves of that rating in my opinion. So yeah, let's actually rate the substitute. So Bernat. Bernat. Well, 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 well. I thought he did pretty well. I thought as literally what I think. I felt he did pretty well. Um I'd give him a a five point five. Because I think that he he's, he was much more direct than Alaba. He was much better def defensively than Alaba in, in this game. I don't know why, but Alaba today he had a real shocker. But um, I thought Benat was much much clearly much better than um, Alaba today, and for me he gets a five point five. I thought that he did pretty well. Um, he went forward all the time, went back to defend all the time. So for me five point five sounds like a fair result, a fair fair, fair grade. Um, then you look at obviously Coleman. Coleman I think gets an eight, seven seven point five. Let's give him a seven point five. I thought Coleman. He, so let's give him a seven. I'll give Coleman a seven because, look, he created a goal for Miller. That's a t that's a take. That's a that's a straight off take in the last minute as well. That's a straight off take. Then he scored a goal. You know, that's another tick. <laughs> so you you have to think about that. Like you see. He, he most of the time he got stopped. Let's be realistic here. Most of the time he got stopped and he didn't really advance much. But at least he tried, and that's that's what I like to see. Even if even if it doesn't work, I like to see us try. Um, and that's obviously what Coleman did today. So for me, like I said, I, gi I give him a seven. Um, I, I give Costa a seven as well. So I think both of them they they were pretty equal. But uh, obviously the big story is in Coleman because obviously he's the former Juventus player or still Juventus player technically. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I do think that him and Costa were pretty equal. I just thought that he should go on his left a little bit more. I really do. Come on, you're still young and everything, but try your left a little bit. Well, you know, use your left foot, your weak foot as well a little bit more, because the more you use it, the better you get. Trust me on that. Um, and obviously the last substitute, Thiago. I thought that Thiago, in, in of itself, he didn't actually have too good of a game. I thought he had an okay game. Um, no, maybe okay is a bit... It is a bit harsh. I think he had a pretty good game. Um, I'd give Thiago a a six. I, I think a six is justified because I think that Thiago he uh, a lot of the time he gave the ball away unnecessary. Like I don't know what it was, but when he came on, I think like literally the first action that he did on the ball he was give give the ball away to Juventus so that they could counter attack. Then a few minutes later he did that as well. So he did that quite a lot. But obviously he came and crunch. 
and as the game went on he became better and better so when he came in right away he was pretty poor but then when the game went on and on we got, we got a bit much better and uh, that's why I give Thiago a 6 but that's what I think tell me what you guys think in the comment section down below as well as you can rate comment favorite subscribe you can peace out and you can have a nice day wow I'm tired I am tired I've exhausted so much energy today it's 3 o'clock in the morning I haven't eaten yet um, but it's just the way it is you know? that's, that's what football nights are all about yeah that's what it is that's what it is but yeah people thanks for watching as always rate comment favorite subscribe peace out and have a nice day bye